All right. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Fix This Build That Sunday Night Live show. I'm Brad. And I'm Susan. And we are back from the aquarium. We are. We made it. We went to the aquarium uh, yesterday, and it was fantastic. It was really fun. In Chattanooga. If, yep. if uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is a really fun town if you're it at is. all nearby to go check out. It's quite nice. It's really pretty. Yeah. Lots of fun things. All go. right. Let's see what we have going on here over on YouTube. What is up? We got Katie, Mike, uh, Travis, Rick is in the house. Who else we have? Elliot. What's up, my man? And Ray Zor from Nevada. How's mm -hmm. it going, guys? How's it going? Over on the Instagrams. By the way, if you're not joining us on YouTube and you're on Instagram, please come join us. We're at Fix This Build That Live. It is the swear. second channel mm -hmm. for uh, for yes. Fix This Big Build That. Fix This Big That. <laughs> <laughs> Fix This. It's a much better big that. interface experience. Uh, Aloha. Mm -hmm. What's up? We got Aloha style. We got Bears oh. Wood Designs. Vietnam in the house. What's All up, right. my man? Uh, Uruguay from Pepe, and I, know, I said Pepe, <laughs> um, and uh, who we have here, uh, Huntley Pine Industries, McGriff Makes from Sacramento, Backcountry Fire from Kansas City, and Israel Chen from Kirkland, Washington. Cool. <clears throat> I'm going to have to apologize ahead of time. I've been sneezing like you crazy for been. about the first, last like 30 minutes. All of a sudden. Um, it was like a cat had entered our know, home. Maybe gosh. there was like a mystery cat that we don't know about ah. making us all So sneeze. I'm going to be doing a lot of sneezing, so I apologize <laughs> in advance. So just bear with me. Yes. Uh, all right. Before we jump into things, I do want to thank some new members to the uh, Builders Club. We had <laughs> Dan Robinson, Cliff Jones, <laughs> Bill Weigand, Rick Wallace, and Keith F. And uh, they joined the Builders Club either on Patreon or on YouTube memberships, which we now have. Yeah. Uh, and basically what that is, the Builders Clubs, is just the inner circle of the Fix This Build That community where they get uh, weekly updates and new early access to videos, as well as credits in the videos and uh, plans and different things for different tiers. So if you're interested in checking that out, you can go check it out in the YouTube memberships or the Patreon site, which has the higher level tiers for yeah. like the free plans and all it that. It has more going on. Yeah. yeah. Fixthisbuildout.com <clears throat> forward slash builders club if you're interested in checking that out. But thank you so much to uh, to those guys who joined, all, all dudes this this week. We had we had all women last, we didn't have all women. We had a lot of women last week. A lot of women, week. yeah. All dudes. The dudes are representing, I like it. <laughs> Coming on strong. <laughs> oh, Brian gosh. Farnuth says, Unde undefeated, st oh, sorry, I can't talk. Undefeated Steelers versus undefeated Titans. Oh, can't Woo wait! Titans. Can't wait! Yeah, we watched Next. the. Uh, oh my gosh, that was so exciting. Yeah, it was nerve wracking. We watched the the. <laughs> the Titans game. The Titans game. I was I was just laughing at, at how we watched it. So, <laughs> uh, so we used to have YouTube TV, and uh, we were sharing it with a friend. Um, <laughs> which I guess technically is illegal, maybe. Not illegal. <laughs> it was, it's like a family plan. He's like family. Yeah. Uh, We've got a lot of family plans with him. Yeah. He, we do. He's, yeah. we, we, share, we share phones. We share all these plans together. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're in ones, different yeah. cities. And so, yeah, and it was all good. Like they said, like, yeah, it's cool. It's, so, yeah. Uh, but now they said you have to be in the same city to do it. So his, he, ha he owns the main plan on that. He's in Knoxville. We're here in Nashville. And so, like, they're like, yeah, you can't do that anymore. And we're like, what? <laughs> And so then we're like, oh, we don't need it. We don't need, we don't need because we don't, we like never watched live TV. We don't and really. This is just for the live TV. Like we are Netflix, Disney Plus um, yeah, that's junkies. Much that's it. about all we watch. Yeah. Uh, but or anyway. Like, yeah. And so now the football games is the only thing we want to watch. But I want to pay 65 bucks a month just to watch like four football games a month. Uh, if that. That is not how you win, folks. That no, that's not, not how, how you win. win. <laughs> and so, and so uh, the NFL app, for those who don't know, <laughs> We found out through. Do you want to um, know how? Yeah, yeah. Tell them how. My my twelve year old's friend told us. <laughs> told my my twelve year old, and he told us. He's like the NFL app, Dad. You can watch. I mean, this any was game. like you can the stream least... any game live on the NFL app, and I was like, this was like the least likely avenue of. Oh, us I was trying. Like, I, I got the uh, I got the digital get antenna. Done. I got the digital antenna and hooked it up. Oh, we, yeah. can, we get every channel except CBS. Yes. So, so CBS is the only channel we can't get. Uh, but then tried the CBS Sports app and blah 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 blah. blah all this all this junk. Anyway, so we're we're watching my phone. I thought I was gonna outsmart them, and then uh, stream it to the TV. Right. It comes up. I've never seen this before. They're <laughs> smart now, and it's like you cannot stream the NFL app to a TV. <laughs> They're smart. Stop. <laughs> or like whatever it said. And so we're all gathered around. So our, we're like our, under our, a blanket phone. on the couch. It was very cozy. We were Looking all at snuggled it on my up phone. to it, like Brad on the phone watching the game. It was really, it was really fun though. It was a great it game. Was fun. But going on with the the comment here, it says, 
You and Maleki should make an interesting wager. Oh, we should. You really, we really should. I know. We'll I'm a see. little nervous about that. We'll see. But um, anyway, so yes, that was that was that. Um, this week we just released. I I got antsy and I released the uh, vinyl plank flooring video <laughs> for the bathroom. That was like the definition of antsy. It was like I'm putting it out. <laughs> Typically we launch on Sundays, yep. but mm -hmm. uh, I decided to launch on Thursday for you know, various reasons, mainly not? because the other two vinyl plank videos were like all of a sudden screaming out of nowhere. When I say screaming, I mean, they were getting a lot of views. Yeah. And so I mm -hmm. thought, well, I'm going to try to take advantage of that. And so I launched on Thursday and eh, that may or may not have been a good idea, but, but uh, anyway, the video is out. So if you want to see how we put vinyl plank flooring in the bathroom, then you can see mm -hmm. that. Um, I got oh, a low battery alert on the... Spoiler, it looks really good. Spoiler, it does no, look it really, really does. good. So yeah. uh, that's what we got done doing. And then this week, I'm jumping back to phase two. And a lot yep. of you guys have been asking, when is part two of the miter saw station going to come together? That is this week. I'm going to start on that tomorrow. And uh, basically, part two will be filling out all the cabinets. So it won't be necessarily installing the, the miter saw. It will be doing uppers over here on the right as well as an additional upper on the left and an additional lower on the left, both that are just small little guys, 15 inch cabinets, and then making mm -hmm. a new top for this left side, scooching yeah. that top over there. Uh, and then I will have uh, 75 inches to the left and well, I'll have, uh, I'll have 87 because I'll have, cause it's about 12 inches from the side of that to the center of the table saw. So I'll have 87 inches to the left and I'll have, 72 to the right. So I'll have about yep. 13 total feet of of, uh, of space for just goodness miter saw station. I just noticed something. <laughs> what? You're covering up your fantastic shirt. I know. I was I thinking about that earlier. For Father's yeah. Day. Dad jokes? I think you mean rad, rad jokes. jokes. <laughs> I had to stop myself from purchasing like 10 different dad joke t-shirts for yes. you. I was like, this but man does good. not need more t-shirts. But and they were, it was good. Today, we, we're a little bit behind today. So anyway, let me, let me see real quick here what's going on over on the Instagrams. I uh, had a bunch of comments come in. Uh, Mike's Graham, I am not building tonight. Oh, the beer of the night, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're uh, beer drinking. drinking Island Coastal Lager. Island Coastal Lager by Island, I guess. I don't know. From who? Who's the brewing? Who's Take the it easy. Island Coastal by lager.com island soul good vibes crafted brew island soul that's it's obviously from not Fort a... collins colorado not exactly island they don't make this easy east island brewing company Asheville, north go. carolina okay Boom. and fort collins colorado so we, you, know, you know more than you ever needed to know about this beer now now you know it's made by good. lane what is up my man uh <laughs> that was loud. mike's graham boring i'm out of here <laughs> peace out mike <laughs> sorry sorry to offend we you. didn't uh, entertain you enough <laughs> are you know. not entertained <laughs> that's such a good movie we need to watch that head off from, yes yeah, no gonna, you go. got to keep it live on the live whatever, we were talking man. about like whatever whatever michael what is up medlong woodworking back in the house man look at you it's been a long time Brazil um, in the house. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah we, we talked about what we're doing this week, what we're doing next week. So we'll, we'll jump into some yeah. questions here. Let's hear. We had uh, yeah. uh, Barrio Good. Woodworks said, what type of blade am I running on the saw stop? And have I ever had an activation? An activation um, is like when you're, no. No, actually I have. What? Did you test it with like a dummy hand or something? I had, I, I had an activation oh. on the table saw. Oh my gosh. And it was when um, I was looking at it to purchase it. I told you this. What? I well, this was, was forever ago, so I don't remember. Ago. So like, I really had no clue uh, like oh, this was about the saw stop, but, um, <laughs> and the person who was selling it to me didn't have a clue either. It was her late husband's, unfortunately, her husband had passed away like two years ago. She finally decided she wanted to get rid of everything. It was in very bad shape. It was. And yeah. um, I didn't understand, I didn't know the innards of it and everything, so I was kind of looking at it. And, and later what I realized was that the, um, Mm -hmm. the uh, table saw, the, the guard, the blade guard was mm -hmm. not locked down. And so it was like flippy flopping all over. And so I turned it on to see like that it worked. And I was like, mm -hmm. I turned it on was, mm -hmm. and then I turned it off and um, it was winding down. Oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, like it was like, mm -hmm. ding. and like the blade just stopped. It didn't drop. Stop. 
drop. Okay, no. Oh, sorry. Continue. I'm doing DMX, man. I know you're fine. I know all your fingers Listen. are still connected, but it makes me nervous. Oh, hush. For past it stopped. Brad. It stopped. <clears throat> I would, the blade guard was on it. It stopped. You said the blade guard wasn't on it. It wasn't on all the it way. It wasn't locked. Okay. Chill out. I, I still have all my fingers. I know, clearly. but gosh. It stopped. And I had no idea what, I was like, well, what happened? Because like, it wasn't like a big loud pop. The blade was still up. It, the blade just stopped. And I was like, what? And so I don't know what happened, honestly. I think it was like, it was literally spooling down. It was probably going like about, you know, this fast, the blade. And that, that top thing must have dropped down and hit it from the vibrations as it was slowing down. And, uh, and it fired. Because then I tried to, I was like, So the blade guard weird. hit it? There's a riving knife on the back of the blade guard, okay. and I believe that so your dropped flesh down. flesh did not hit no, the blade. Of course not. Okay. Not needed, not I would think I would remember needed. that story. I mean. And so, anyway, okay. I, I, I set it off before I even bought it. I was like, something's wrong with the saws. <laughs> I looked at it, and I was like, and it just like. Like, it's the whole point it just of getting like, one. Like it, it was definitely a malfunction of some sort because typically, like, it would just boom, like, go up and go crazy, but. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it would drop. It didn't do any of that. And lock. That's right. So yeah. I, I did set one off when I was looking to purchase this haul. <laughs> so we know it works. We think it works. But uh, we're never going to find out. I use the um, uh, Freud Fusion is the blade that I use. Yeah. The 40 tooth. And I would like to jump on that story. I've told this before, but it's been a while. Um, one of the many stories about Brad that makes me go, oh, this is the man I married. He's such a sweet person and everything. You made the cutting board. For the oh, lady. So yes. the woman that he bought the saw stop from, um, as he mentioned, her husband had been a woodworker and he passed away. And so Brad bought the saw stop. And did she just give you a she bunch gave of me, wood? She gave me some different off cuts. She was like, hey, do you want any of this stuff? And it right. was like some walnut and cherry and things that I took. Right. Um, she offered me. And then uh, I made a cutting board out of them and then brought it back to her um, you know, about a month later or something like that. And just kind of really surprised sweet. her with a cutting board with, yeah. from, made from her husband's made from the wood off from, cuts. Yeah. So and it was really song. sweet. So <laughs> That's she, all. We, yeah. We, <laughs> I just we, wanted to share that story. We cried. We, I know. Uh, no, I was it was like, really Ooh. sweet. I remember. Um, yes. Anyway. All right. Cool. All right. So, uh, yeah. Everybody Katie wants to know, did you, do we not have Hulu about the whole TV situation? Oh, we have Hulu, but like Hulu live is like, yeah, it's like 55 bucks a month. Oh, again, yeah. like we it's, try to it's, avoid paying for things. Well, this is the bottom line here. If I, if I had use for it, because right. I mean, I would literally be paying 55 bucks a month just to get CBS, just to watch the two or three games that they actually play on yeah. CBS for the Titans <laughs> versus we're not like, we don't watch else, football so. all weekend long every weekend. Right. We're not like I, watching I every watch game that's on. Yeah. I'll watch playoff football, but that's about it. Yeah. But like um, right now, we've yeah, got better I'll things to do with our time at this point. And I've time. officially stopped watching the volunteers for the rest of the <laughs> season. since He's boycotting. They've, bro they've broken your heart too many times. Too many times. Too many times. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. All right. All right. I know. I know. I know. Everybody's at RLL in the house. What's up, Matt? Hey, Ivan? man. Katie's uh, here. We got Simo. I already talked to Katie. I know. I'm just Brendan saying. Horn from Vegas. Matthew Van Blaricom. What's up, my man? What's the best kind of router bits the best that you've found? Brand of router bits. Brand? Yeah. Brand. Um, you know, router bits. Router bits are hard because I use them so infrequently. It's hard to get a good, and it's hard to tell like when a router so like so what makes a good router bit i think would be the first question to ask and i would say that what makes a good router bit would be you know one that that obviously cuts nicely and stays sharp for long the problem is is it's not like the table saw like i use my bits so infrequently it's very hard for me to judge like how long have i been using this and is this really still sharp <laughs> Uh, honestly, I, I've never replaced a router bit, so I've probably got some super dull router bits and I've never sharpened them either. Um, the ones that I will say, the only the only router bits that kind of stick out above the others would be the um, the Freud Quadra cuts, and that's because they have four carbide edges instead of the two that most typical ones have, and I, I have noticed a cleaner finish that they don't burn as much. So. Those are the only ones that off the top of my head, I can be like, oh yeah, th those are very different from the rest. And like all the rest of them, I've had Wood River ones, you know, I've had some Bosch ones, I've had Diablo ones, um, I've had cheap knockoff brand ones, and they all kind of work the same, honestly, uh, for me, because it's just like one of those things, unless you use it, unless you're really using it a lot, it's really hard to, to judge something like mm -hmm. that, for me at least. Yep. All right, let's go back here. I don't know, but I'm just saying, yep. She's I'm like, yep. seeing on here that Rick says, if you want to make sure that your saw stop works, try the hot dog test. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, yeah. I thought like that would just be good fun. Put your finger on it with Let's it. Not well, like on the thing on the not on the blade while it's off, and it'll show you. Oh, that it turns so out. smart. Jam and Jay up in Bowling Green. What's up, dude? Hey, Lucas, Bowling. what's up, man? Lighthouse Boston in the house. Uh, Misfit seventy four. What is an affordable non Baltic birch plywood to buy for shop builds, furniture, mm. and what would I recommend? Mm. Um, I use mostly Baltic birch just because I like the look of it and I like the stability of it. Uh, the stuff that I used to use and that I would use otherwise would probably be like the, the maple ply or even the sanded ply from, from Depot. Um, and those are typically five or seven ply plywoods, poplar core. <laughs> and and uh, man, they're just, they're just so much junkier than the Baltic What is birch. the price difference? It's not much. That's the thing. Yeah, it's that's... like, it's actually nothing. What'd you say last week? Buy ones, cry ones? I've been well, using that all week, by the way. So Just right now, Baltic birch around here um, is 58 bucks a sheet for four by eight. And for maple or, or for birch plywood, pure bond plywood is 55. So it's $3 difference. Yeah, that's So silly. for me, you know, in, like the, the, the cheaper alternative would be like a sanded ply. Um, which is not a maple or a birch or an oak face veneer. And, and that's probably going to run you still 45. Hmm. So for like 10 extra bucks a sheet, it's, now, it's a no brainer. One other me. thing would be that the other ones you can get at Home Depot. Correct. And then the Baltic birch, we have to go to, well, you, I never go. You go to the local plywood place. Yes. So it's not quite as convenient. It ain't quite but as like convenient. But like how often are you going to get plywood? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times you stock up. Yeah, I, I tried to It would be great get, if they had sales on them. Or no, the price fluctuates, right? I don't, yeah. Um, Depending on like supply and stuff. It, it, it went down. It went down. We've been talking yeah, about the prices of lumber going up. The actual price of Baltic birch went down. It was, yeah, it was like, because it used to be 62. And I was like, how much? And they're like 58. And I was like, we'll just take it. <laughs> it's I'll, like, I didn't ask I'll, questions. I'll, I just I'll, I'll take it. four. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I did. It's a deal. Uh, because it, it's, it's quite a bit further north. Uh, it's north of the city. And so yeah, when like, I go up there, I try to buy... Hall at least two sheets at a time mm -hmm. uh, and i lately i've been buying four sheets at a time just so i don't yeah, have to go back up there totally um, you, were, you already answered that one i understand that thank you razor uh thank you so much for uh the congrats on the million subs blake yep. weber what's up my dude and uh oh yeah all right oh big yeah billy. big billy says the cbs yes. app is five bucks a month isn't that what we use i'll now? have to look at that yeah. i don't know what that means maybe Does we could mean... sling it or well, if I could get it on, because I tried CBS All Access, it's like all confusing, man. I like, I have an LG TV, and they, they the LG App Store is just horrendous. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We figure it out. This was an improvement though, because last week we like didn't have access to the game, so this was a good yeah. one to watch. Matt Ivan, how do you know when your table saw blade mm. is starting to dull? That's a good question, mm. because that one <clears throat> does happen. I use it a lot. Um, normally. When you when you start, so the first there'll be two signs, two major signs of your table saw blade needing some maintenance. Uh, the first will be uh, it takes more pressure to push it through. It might seem like it's it's not cutting as well, and you're like you have to push harder to make the to make the boards go through the blade. Uh, and the other would be burning. So if you are starting to see burn edges on the boards that you're cutting, uh, both of those could be a sign of that it needs maintenance. And then typically what it's going to be is it's going to be uh, pitch and resin built up on the blade. It's not going to be that it's dull. It's going to be like, especially if you're cutting a resinous wood like pine. So if you cut a lot of pine or any pine, uh, you're going to get pitch and resin, which is basically, you know, the tar or the sap from the tree, not the tar. Um, I'm thinking pine tar. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's like the, the, the sap and the buildup of the tree <laughs> from the dust and, and the sap going together. Uh, and you can clean that off and there's pitch and resin removers. Uh, so a lot of times you clean your blade and you're, you're right back to it. Uh, and so, and then if you continue are doing that and then eventually you, you know, have a clean blade and it's still giving you that issue, then that's when you probably know, Hey, it's time to get it resharpened or, or get a new blade. Um, I honestly have never sharpened a blade. I, I clean them quite often and I've never sent a blade out for sharpening, but I've, I've gotten new ones. Um, I mean, I've got probably seven or eight different table <laughs> saw blades, so I've not used one, I don't think, long enough to make it go dull um, for whatever reason. I've been, I hopped around, I had like a saw stop one, I had a Bosch one that I used for a while, I had a DeWalt one I used for a while, 
then I had a Diablo uh, 50 tooth combo, which I love that blade. Then I got the Fusion. So I've kind of been bouncing between blades mm -hmm. here for, for a little bit. Just trying them all out. Trying them all out. That's um, right. How do you feel about the Woodworker 2 on that subject? The Woodworker 2 <clears> blade, <throat> I've never used the Woodworker 2 blade, so I can't give direct. One of the few he's not used. That's right. But I, <laughs> so I can't give uh, you know direct experience from it, but I know a lot of people love it. Um, that is kind yep. of the, you know, the gold standard, if you will. Nice. Um, YouTube TV is good for NFL. I, I know. It's just 65 bucks 60 a month. <laughs> Um, um, Brendan Horn wants to know, what's your inspiration? What's my inspiration? So not That's funny who, because but so, what? Oh, he came over. Look, oh, he's hitting. Oh, he's Brendan, like, I like it, They dude. will answer my question. I was like, I just on... saw that same thing. Brendan yeah. came over. By the way, Brendan came over from Instagram. If you're on Instagram, come on over to YouTube. Yep. Fix this, build that live or live right now. The chat is way better. And really uh, the is. video, I look way better on, <laughs> on 1080p. I always look good. Susan looks magnificent. <laughs> um, Inspiration is, so, um, yeah, inspiration. you know, it's, it's, um, so wh what or who, what? what is, uh, you know, <laughs> ah, you're really selling it. Babe. I have no idea. I, I was, was going to go somewhere things. with that. I just kind of like, I, I don't know what I was going to say. No, most of the times I get inspired. I mean, you know, shop builds is easy because it's, there's not much you can, I mean, there is much you can do. There right. is much you can do. <laughs> um, for the other builds, you know, I like, I like looking around at all kinds of different mediums being like, um, I'll look at magazines when I'm out. That's what I've, I've hotel told people lobbies. a lot when I'm out. I do hotel <laughs> yeah. lobbies, like hotel lobbies have some awesome furniture. Or like fancy restaurants. It's usually really cheaply made. And so that's like, I'll look at that and I'll be like, Ooh, I think like the, uh, the initial concept for the, um, for the, um, epoxy waterfall table that I did was from, was from a, a hotel. And it didn't have, it wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't epoxy and waterfall, but it, it had like that, it was a waterfall just of normal, of wood. And it went over and it was probably like veneered and like horrible, but, um, but the structure behind it. And I was like, Ooh, that's good. I was like, Whoa, what if I, you know, do this and do that? And so, mm -hmm. uh, I do get a lot of inspiration from out and about. And then, you know, just Pinterest internet, seeing what other people build. Um, Instagram is obviously a huge one that it's just <clears> amazing watching you know, all these crafts people out there making yep. stuff that I could never dream of. I mean, I'm, I'm not that creative of a dude. And so, um, so typically what I'm doing is finding ideas from different areas and I'll take a little piece of this, a little piece of that, a little piece of that, and then a little piece of my own originality and, and put it all together or figure out a new way to put it together. And that's kind of, yeah, that's kind of how I work. And sometimes it's um, like for the shop, I feel like your thing is being very efficient. Yes. With storage space, with the materials, with just making it work as well as possible. And then around the house, I would say a lot of it, too, is um, driven by our children. They yes. make demands, you know, the, they the want... The children are... They are, are... They want certain things. Harsh overlords. I mean, they really think that they're... I feel like they really firmly believe that you can build anything, and I could probably sew anything to go with it. I can. And so... And I, I could remember. not, though. Like, sewing is a whole it thing. It might just take two years, but I can make it. It could take a while. <laughs> yeah. I love so it. So, we, uh, we have a demanding Nate audience. Nate Hoekstra. He's making the desk with yeah. drawers. Dude, that's fantastic. Uh, when you get that's finished, absolutely send me some pictures. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. I've seen some amazing... Somebody made one recently they like they pimped it out i was like ooh! Did like they, they put made the it wireless of, charging in it they made it out of oak they did drawers on two sides okay. they made it like double depth yeah. and then they did um so it was sitting out in the middle of a room so they had like a traditional desk um uh, we're about to lose instagram i think oh no um and uh Quick, they, come to and so they <laughs> did so they did like a raised panel um guys i on instagram folks i did not charge my phone so the battery is about to die so if you want to continue the conversation, come over to YouTube because I got I to gotta sign off, guys. Sorry. Come over to YouTube. Fix This Build That Live is the YouTube channel. Hope we see you over there. Yeah, that is, that is going to die in like any yeah, second. It's, so we'll just kind of... It's looking pretty dark. All right. Sorry about that. Dark days. Um, the, the dark days. Um, and now we're just here. Just the YouTube. Just oh, us. it is so much better on just YouTube. It is, uh, yeah. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> now, I can, now I just have one place to, to yeah. answer questions, which is fantastic. We'll be focused. Uh, <laughs> Blake, anybody tell you you look like a million subs? Thank you, Blake. <laughs> uh, I think I should make a baseball bat. That was, that'd be kind of fun. fun. Let's see here. If I start to see burning, check the blade and make sure it's clean first. Absolutely. About that, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's what I'm talking about. The grade, uh, Rick, good question. The, the grade of the Baltic birch, because obviously grading will uh, significantly affect the pricing. 
The grade of the Baltic Birch I buy is 4B or BBBB, they call it 4B. Um, I have gotten in the past 3B, I guess, B and then BB on the other side, which is really nice. BB, so the BB grade, what that, and it, they're graded differently because they're foreign uh, than, than what like a typical, like, excuse me, uh, a typical, you would have like A, B, C, but it doesn't do that for the Baltic Burst stuff. It's like B, 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 then C, but I don't even, I don't know if it does A or not. Um, regardless, what it is, <clears throat> B, B for any one side is um, like you can't have like streaking discoloring. Like you can have maybe just a very minimal amount, but you can have the patches and I hate that but you can have a minimum amount of patches. I think they're, I tried to look it up because I got one sheet that was like, had a ton of patches. And I was like, oh man, I was like, this doesn't meet grade. And then I looked it up and it was like, I thought it was like six or less, but then somebody, another one was like, eh. So I found it hard to like really lock in because I was gonna mm -hmm. be like, I'm gonna take it back and be like, well, it's not like you can even grade. at your place at least. It's not like you can go through the birch. Oh uh, yeah, I mean like, like okay, here's here's the deal. I, I go to Nashville Plywood. This is the pet peeve. Of sorts. They're they're decent guys there. The guys in the front office are pretty pretty okay, pretty cool. But um, this is a raving review right now. But I mean, like they're not rude. <laughs> no. Right. But they're also not like going out of the way to help me. And then um, if I even suggest that I want to look through this, they're like, no, like you're like. And then the guys in the in the place, the guys that are actually in the warehouse delivering the stuff. They're not cool at all. Um, they're they're verging on being jerks, um, and and not not I'm verging on not being jerks. well. I'm not going to call them jerks because they're you know like it's right like they're in the warehouse and it's like they run a warehouse they run a wholesale business. Yeah. They're not like that's their thing. It's like look we they do a lot of volume and most of it is to commercial people. It's not to people coming in like me who are buying onesie twosies, um, <laughs> and so. <laughs> And so like, if I ever, if I ever ask them to go like out of their way at all, they're just like, yeah, no, like, they're like this, we got big, bigger fish they're like, to fry. They're like, this ain't that place. Like you need to like, we ain't doing that. Like, I mean, <laughs> anything. I'm like, hey, can I go look at this other? No, they're like, no, you need to go talk to the guys up front. And it's just like, not even like, they're not even like cool about it in the sense of like, like, man, you know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. like we can't do that, man. We just have too many. They're just like, no, we don't do that here. So it's just like the way they address it. And I get it. Like if I was in their shoes, I'd probably feel the same way, but I'd probably be a lot more cordial about it and at least not be a jerk. Right. And so I've had that experience with multiple people. So that being said, I've had it with at least two or three guys there and they're the upper guys, but the guys that like drive the, the forklifts, they're pretty cool. Um, and they help me load it up and stuff. And like they're, they've never given me any beef. It's like the dudes who actually are in charge of the stuff are just like you look at the stuff the wrong way and he's gonna be like get out of here <laughs> like so oh, like, oh man just trying to like get something that looks good we're going cabinets baby this is just going on youtube they don't care <laughs> you gotta look good for youtube I yeah i tried to tell him man i tried to tell him look at this quality woodworks youtube is so much better than calling the ig i've been I trying know. to tell y'all man i've been trying to tell we have quite a few people came over i love it i know i love it's it great. miss fit 74 came over yep. i mean Dude, that's what we're going to do from now on. The phone's going to die phone, conveniently. I'm, I'm just going to act. Oh, my phone's dying. Everybody got to come over. <laughs> yes. It is so much better, though. Yes. that's. Sometimes right, you need a little kick, little, like a big nudge in the right direction. That's right. That's right. All right. What do we yeah. have? What else do we have? Uh, uh, Luke came over. Here. Lucas came over. <laughs> All right. I love it. Uh, Aiden, looking for a new push stick for a table saw. Any recommendations? Um, Aiden, there's, uh, you know, lots of. The, the commercial one that I use, and I even got it, like I, I sent, like I did something, I signed up for their email list or something, and they sent it to me. Um, it's called the 11th Finger, and it's by um, uh, FastCap. And it is, it's magnetic, and you, you'll you probably see it in my videos from time to time. It's magnetic, and it's just a, a really skinny one. And I use it, I use that one when I have the blade down to where I don't feel comfortable using, or I can't. So it's usually like for an inch and a half cut and less. And it's a big orange little arc, but it's got magnets on the end so I can stick it under the table saw. So it's always handy. Uh, I like that one the best. And then as far as anything else, I just use shop made ones. Um, I use one that my grandfather had actually, which is, which is kind of fun. So I use that one. Uh, and then I have a couple that are literally just pieces of plywood that I just like cut a notch in and, and uh, 
I need to make one. I should make like a like a FTBT push stick. It look like a cabinet or something. What are you talking about over here? Just chatting. And I do so micro jig. Micro jig does make a good one um, with the um, uh, gripper. I just I don't I don't like that you have to if you're making a bunch of cuts at the same width uh, and especially like I the way I like to use the gripper is for like um, rabbit cuts or like things like that where it's like kind of cutting through not necessarily cutting like a non through cut so a groove or a dado or something like that mm -hmm. I use it a lot there um, I I love the I love the gripper and the What's it, the what is that one called? Thing? That one's called the um, the grip blocks. Yeah. I love those on my joiner. That's where I typically use them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's with, they're not adjustable. They're just like grip pad push blocks. Right. I see you using those all the time. All the time. That's, all that's the what I time. use there. Uh, let's see here. Second on the, everybody's liking the micro jig. Hit that like button. Tell them, Beth. Beth's like, hit that mm -hmm. like button, baby. Uh, right. Lucas, mm. doing five tables a week and I'm booked through February. That's a what lot. What do you suggest to make time for content? Gosh. Are these dining room tables? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're doing... Custom tables. I see it. Five tables a week. That's awesome. Uh, right. So you're fully booked, obviously. Right. How do you it's make... How do you out. suggest making time hmm. for content? So if that was my situation, what and I know you've been doing content, Lucas, you, you've been crushing it over there on Instagram and, and now on TikTok as well, which I have been doing TikTok. Uh, I've... I've done, um, I signed up with for a little thing with them to do a bunch of posts as part of their creative learning fund. fund. And um, so I've been doing a bunch over there and the channel has grown over there. But, um, you know, if you're trying to build Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever, if you're just trying to get content, what you need is you need either one of two things. Like what I would suggest would be to try to get like in your situation, if I ran a commercial shop, I would try to get like an intern or something. Like I'd try to get like a, I won't say a high schooler because you're, you're building during the day, obviously. I'm thinking what you're thinking. But I would try to get somebody like fresh out of college that you could come in for like minimum wage or like 10 bucks an hour, like whatever, to get something cheap, just to, ha just to like, depending upon, like to get cell phone footage. Like if they, if you have like an iPhone for them to use or, or if they have an iPhone or whatever, like, Hey, bring your own iPhone and you're going to shoot footage <clears throat> because the content for like Instagram. So it depends upon if you're wanting to do YouTube videos. If you want to do YouTube videos, it's a different answer. Right. If you're just looking for social, you yeah. can just grab anybody to, to, and, and teach them how to, you know, I you mean, can I would do think so like many cool things with a this. A college age kid would be perfect for that. Right. Cause they already know. Like they already know how to do all this stuff anyway. It. They'll roll in there yeah. with their phone and just be like, Hey, look, I want you to catch this and like have them come in. Yeah for a few hours and like uh, get cool shots and yeah, get before them, and after, or like trend, I don't, you know, not doing before and after. It's kind of like a part-time, a part-time yeah. gig is, is what I would try to do if I had that. Um, but honestly, what I would, what I would do is more than likely is try to, to hire somebody part-time to be yeah. like the content manager and to really, so instead like, of being like, well, how do I just get content for Instagram mm -hmm. or that? like get somebody that's going to actually do content for the entire channel right. and they're going to do all the YouTube, all the Facebook, all the Instagram, the TikTok, and like, and actually pay somebody to do that and have it pay back in the form of, um, ad dollars on YouTube as well as sponsorships. And then obviously word of mouth and getting more, more sales. Right. I think that could pay for itself. Um, Lucas, I really do. If you can get, again, get, get a young kid, you know, out of film school or something like that. Um, that you could yeah. <laughs> hire on for, you know, 30 grand or, or part-time, that'd be full-time uh, or part-time. I, I don't know. I mean, you could, I don't know what the going rates are, honestly, but. I think um, finding that person is probably the hardest part. Finding so. that person, it is, but put, I would put it out there because that's something, I mean, like we've right. been discussing, like, how do you, how do you do that? Uh, and, you know, could you make back that money in a year? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like how many tables do you have to sell to, to get an extra 30 grand, how many, how much ad revenue, right. how many sponsored deals, well, how much and time, how is it driven by that? How much time is that going to free up it's for the opportunity you cost. to have, yeah, right. Like for you to be able to really focus in on churning out those tables and right. like all the contracts that you have to deal with and the all, all the behind the scenes stuff that people don't think about all of that stuff. If you have somebody that is going to be manning everything else, and that you can kind of train them up and let them know what you want, and then they just run with it. That would be very freeing too. I mean, yeah, I don't because you don't want to hire—not that you don't want to hire—but uh, if you hire somebody who's professional who does it, then you're going to pay, pay, 
pay yeah. a premium versus bringing somebody in. You've already done a lot of content, Lucas. So you, you guys know what you're, you know what you want, you know what you need. So bring in somebody that has just a little bit of experience yeah. who knows how, you know, is, is savvy in, in digital, which most young kids are and these you days. Could, and you could like see other people that do not even tables, but like other people that are building things where like you look at their social and you're like, hey, I like how they do this. I like how often they're posting or I like like how they're creating yeah. these hashtags and for people to like jump in on it or whatever. And, yeah. And, and put and some just deliverables kind of, in there for them. Yeah. I think that'd be really good. Yeah. I mean, that, maybe you know somebody, you know, maybe like, or maybe a friend of yours like has a kid graduating from college and they need a job right now. Like that could be a really cool first time job it would too. Be. Matt yeah. Happel coming <clears throat> over. What's up, Matt? Hope that helped. Listening on the air, on my AirPods and the sound quality is so much better. I bet. Not it's not echoey over I here. I know. I know. It's, yeah. so, it's so good. Um, an FTBT push stick. <laughs> uh, let's hear Misfit 74. Do you use a track saw a lot? And if so, do you use a, a rail square like the TSO? I've uh, been looking into track saws and the Makita seems realistic value over the festival. I do use track saw, um, but I don't use it a lot for finished cuts. I use it mainly for breaking down plywood. So I've got the, the Craig um, track saw and I don't square it. I just, like I literally it's almost completely to cut down plywood. And so what I'll do is just measure the measurement on one side, do it on the other side, and then just connect the points with, uh, with the track because you know if I'm off by a little bit, it's not that big of a deal because uh, I'm squaring it up on the table saw. I have used it for um, <clears throat> putting straight edges on slabs. That's probably the other thing that I've used it for. Yeah. Um, cutting off live edge, stuff like that. And uh, so that's more of like a rip cut, obviously. Uh, so I don't know, but these, but the ones I've seen, like I've seen those, I know what you're talking about. Those, the squaring things, like those mm -hmm. look pretty cool. And that could, like, if you're using it for finished cuts, then yeah, that could, that could definitely help out to give you more peace of mind. Um, depends on what you're using it for, but like, if you're just using it to like put a, put a square in on a table, and if you're off like a 16th over four feet, like on the, and that's a lot, like I think it's being off a 16th would be like, I think you could eyeball and get it under a 16th and even if you were off a 16th over the end of a table like you're never gonna nobody's gonna ever notice that you um, may know and it might bother you yeah you, you <laughs> but might about it. but you might not i think that would bother someone i know it you, might oh but my it gosh might not. i think don't it go would. measure our table i don't know <laughs> yeah. and, and that's i cut our table yeah i cut uh, oh yeah i cut the ends so of our big, table right so that that's the main stuff i'm doing breaking down plywood yeah. maybe cutting uh slabs cutting straight edges on slabs and then cutting tables to size yeah um and to me, just measuring it and drawing it out, like oddly enough, <sighs> to me that's fine. <laughs> there are things just because that are okay, I'm like because I know things... because like where I so where that I really that's interesting though that that doesn't bother you. Well, the reason it doesn't bother me is because I know it's not fitting onto anything. Like I know it's it's not it's not joinery. So whenever that's I have true. pieces that are going to be like joined like in a cabinet or whatever, like I'm very I'm very diligent about making sure I get the right cuts. If it's good, because I don't want gaps, I don't want any right. of that. But if it's like the end of a table. I'm just like, okay, like I line it up and I, I, I'm, at good. Least, I'm yeah. at least within, I would say a 32nd across, you know, 42 inches. And that's obviously like, yeah. you, you probably can't even measure that to see that it's, <clears throat> that it's off. So anyway, yeah, I, I use it a lot. Um, I use the track saw a fair amount, but it's mainly the plywood that I use it for. Good, good question because I know a lot of people are looking at those. Um, Let's see here. Heard a lot about the e-commerce merchants do the same. Oh, cool. Mike Chow. Yeah. Thank you. Made some birdhouses, kitchen tables, cornhole boards, uh, wet bars, wooden flags, and much more. Brent, it's like Brenda a whole Hayden. bunch wow. of things. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah, regarding interns. So, um, yeah, and, and that's like one one thing. By the way, so if, if, if any of you guys, uh, <laughs> are any of you guys, I don't think anybody here, well, RLL I know is um, in the Nashville area, uh, and, and Matt, actually, Matt Happel is in the Nashville area. So I, I guess I, I'll so take that, that back. back. So at least two, <laughs> two people two are. Of you. Um, so we're, we're actually looking for, we don't know exactly mm. what we're looking for, quite honestly. We're, we're doing a few different things, but we're right. considering like having, having somebody, and then COVID like really put the brakes on everything. Yes. But I've been looking at getting a camera, a camera person to come in um, and, you know, take that, take that to the next level as far as the cinematography and then also take the burden off me of having to like set up the camera and get the shots. Right. Uh, because like there's, you know, like I'm so honed in 
I, I do the same shots and now actually doing, this is gonna be interesting doing the new remodel here because I'm gonna have, it's like, I, I, I know all the shots I can do on the miter saw as it was. And so now I'm, I'm gonna have to kind of set up new ones uh, or, you know, you, but once you get the feel, like I kind of know like five or six different shots on the table saw and like, mm -hmm. but it, that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing that I can set it up very quickly. The bad thing is, is like, I don't, I don't push myself to be like, oh, I should set up something else. Or like, let me see if I can get a different angle. I'm typically like, all right, let me get the shot. All right, this will be tight. This will be wide. This will be from behind. This will be from the side. This will be a 45 degree angle. This will be, you know, low from, uh, from behind the saw. And with a camera person, you can just get, it's just so much more dynamic because they can, you know, start to the side of you and, and move around to the front or yeah. vice versa or come in high and then come in low, um, come in tight on the blade. And, um, and that is something that I think would be, be cool. cool. Yeah. Um, but more so of just to be able to give me content that of what I just said to you, Lucas, is <laughs> that we need to do that. That would be as awesome. Well. Oh my gosh. To have like, to have cause I still awesome. do all my own. I do right. all my own, um, social content except for the teasers, which my editor does. So I do have an editor, Scott. I don't think Scott is on today. I haven't today. seen him on here now. Um, but, but Scott Madrigal, he does my editing for me and, uh, he's been doing that for the last nine, 10 months, which has been, been awesome and has definitely taken a burden off me from the, the, the full video side, but I mm -hmm. still do all the social stuff. Um, like I said, other than, than the teaser cut downs for Facebook and Instagram. Yep. That's true. So I need somebody that has, uh, uh, like a mission impossible, like a me face that could do like lives for me and stuff. I'd be like, I'm going to be here working. Just go tell the you people. You need an identical twin. Can you get on Instagram live and talk? That is oh, dude, like cool that really be? tech savvy and could just do all that stuff. That would be awesome. You'd probably hate me. What if it was like an evil twin? Or would I be the evil twin? You would never be the evil twin. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Uh, yeah, no, that would be cool. Um, yeah, so if you know anybody, let us know. Yeah, so if you guys know anybody local, I'd love to, I'd love to hear about it. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Misfit loved the tile video. Never thought to use laminate in the, in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. How, you, I really you, like it. What, yeah, what I think you say? were... We were skeptical at first, and we went through a different, a few different colors too, because they I don't have very many options. I wasn't skeptical until we actually started like ripping up the old floor and prepping the new floor and dealing with the toilet and everything. It's a bit late to be skeptical. I know, I know. But then I was like, <laughs> well, how is this exactly going to work? But then, I mean, it was just a little, for me, it was overwhelming. For Brad, he was like, he knew the way everything was going to work out. In the process that we had to go through. I had an idea. He had an idea. I had no idea. I was like, okay, we'll just never have a bathroom again on the first floor. We, the That's one, fine. The one thing, we, we should tell them the story of the, the toilet flange. Oh, gosh. The saga. So the, is... so we, we, I ripped out ceramic. So if you haven't seen yeah. it, I, I, I talked about it earlier, but uh, I installed a new vinyl plank flooring in our downstairs bathroom, which is the only bathroom downstairs. So it's right. kind of the, you know, the main bathroom that guests would use when they're just over like, at the house it's like our main bathroom period it is yeah. it's the bathroom probably gets the most use because we're downstairs, we're downstairs. for most of the day yeah <clears throat> um it is a full bathroom but we hard well i won't say that the kids I mean, the kids will take baths in there quite often but, but not very often anymore they true. used to a lot more. they used to when they were younger yeah. we would we would get it's just bathroom. so much easier so it does have a bath tub there but right. it's very small it's like five a little bit over five feet by five feet yep um and so it had ceramic tile i ripped that out and it had a ditra underlayment and then the ma it had mastic, then Ditra, which is like a um, plastic membrane type thing. Yeah. And then thin set on top of it, and then the ceramic tile. So the whole buildup was about an inch. This uh, vinyl tile is about a quarter inch. And then I was going to do underlayment, five mil wood mm -hmm. subfloor underlayment, not subfloor, but just underlayment to cover the OSB subfloor. And anyway, the stack up of those two was about was under a half inch it was a so lot lower. what happened is that the toilet flange was too high and if i had have left it that way like i would have put the toilet on it would have completely squashed the wax ring and been sitting on the flange and still not been sitting on the floor it would so have I had been to lower. wobbly could have been could leaking be... so not we decided good. we had to move it and um i have a contractor buddy here in the neighborhood and he was like oh yeah just you know nah, 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 nah. and i was like all right cool i can do that and it's so it is on the first floor and we have a crawl space so i had full access to it it was a fairly straightforward job kind of and so <laughs> you I, get to hang out with all the spiders i cut it pulled it out and that worked great 
And then uh, the problem was is that I had to, we had to put that in there and it was not, um, you know, it was, it's, it's held in, in place by a pipe strap down there, but I didn't feel comfortable just like jamming it from the top. And like, that's what I see a lot of people do. And I didn't want to like extend it. So I cut it halfway down. And uh, so like I didn't, I guess what I could have done is extended it up through the floor. Cause that's what a lot of people do. Extend it through the floor, cut it flush at the subfloor, oh. then put the flange on. But I, I don't know why I didn't do that. But anyway, we <laughs> because I wanted it, because I wanted it flush to the floor. You were afraid it was going to move after that, or what? I don't know. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, no, I know exactly why. Because I was afraid I'd push down on it, and then we would lose grade because it has to have grade to it. So you know, it has to have slope to it because you want the you know you don't want it to back up in the elbow. Right. Anyway, so we did that, and I had Susan put. I was below doing the PVC cement, and I was going to have Susan up top pushing it down. And right. I said, you need to push it down and make it flush with the floor. And she's like, okay. Well, he's like, you got to push and twist. Push and twist. I'm like, okay. And then it's got to line up this way so that the toilet is right. facing the right direction. So that the, so that the bolt so holes will be in the right All position. that sounds great. Fine. No problem. And then we go and he's under the house and I'm in the bathroom and the kids are like watching TV or something. <laughs> it's like Friday night at like nine. It's just like the glamorous life of us like doing, you know, plumbing at like nine o'clock at night. And, um, and he's like, he, you put the stuff on, right? The purple. You have to thing. do it fast. If you've not worked with PVC oh cement, gosh. like it smells horrible. You go too. and then like you have to go and, and like the get fumes it are like coming up through the pipe into my face. And so I'm like, I'm like, all right, <laughs> I lost go. brain cells. And, and I like, I try to go, <laughs> but like you know, you're pushing it flush onto the OSB. No, the, yes. the plywood, but whatever, oh, the, yeah. the plywood, yeah, no, the to OSB. the floor. Was it the OSB? Yeah. Okay, whatever. So pushing it flush, and then I have to turn it too, and my finger gets caught like between. I mean, it wasn't too bad, but like between the flange and the ground and meanwhile i was like oh my gosh i gotta twist it and it was just done like and, it but i'm underneath was done and i'm underneath there and i'm like all right go push it and then like i have no idea what's happening because i'm right. underneath and then like, <laughs> i just hear silence and she's like no i was like ha ah! up then, there silently and then she was like uh, <laughs> he's it, like is it okay is it in place i'm like okay she's like no and i was no. like what do you mean she's like no. <laughs> and he's like, are you sure? Are you sure it's not right? I'm like, oh no, it's and definitely it like not. Off the it was floor. cockeyed. The bolts it were was... not even the right, even if it no. had gone all the way down, like she wasn't able to turn it. It, got, no. it was a disaster. It was horrendous. It was so a you had to cut that part out. We cut the part out. Second time was a charm. We, Second time was long much story better. Short, we, we practiced. Uh, we practiced. I was like, okay, Susan, here's that. I was so nervous. Like, I was so <laughs> nervous. Turn. We tried to do too much of a turn. It I was, like, I was like, pra like literally practicing it and thing. like mentally preparing myself. Like you would think it was like training for the Olympics or something. I was so like, I would just doing say, it. All, it went great for all you married couples out there. That is a test of your marriage. If you want right a there. test of your marriage, or if you don't want to test your marriage, do not install plumbing together. Don't just hire a plumber. Just hire a plumber. I mean, honestly, I would say unless you're really well versed in this area, if you're ever going to lower a toilet stack or whatever you call it, it's not hard. It, it's actually not hard. It's just I it, wouldn't do it personally. No, it's I not would hard. hire a plumber. It's 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 very straightforward, but. I just yeah. don't think it's worth the stress level. Because you know not, some plumber's going to come in and do it like no big deal. Of oh, course yeah, you've got to pay like for it, seconds. but I was, I was, I was, I was super annoyed that it didn't work. And like <laughs> instinctively I was like, but I was also like, this oh. is ridiculous. Like I'm not going to like, I'm not going to like jump on her because she didn't like twist the, like <laughs> this is not her gig. No. We're just like. We, what we said, it was like, worst case, we're just going to have to tell, do it again. <laughs> no, I can tell when you're stressed about something like that because Brad just gets really quiet and he's just like, okay. And then he like walks off into the office and you hang That's out. That's I, I have, I have my, You like go watch some YouTube videos. I have my blanket that I scream into. I know. Ah! And, and then you come back in later and you're like, I all right. I don't have a blanket. No, you don't. I should though. But it's um, screaming in my mind. It's, it's better now. Uh, yeah, but anyway, she was a trooper. She I was got a trooper. It on the second time. I you, didn't sign up for this. You, you nailed know. it. I did. I was so yeah. excited. I was pretty nervous. I was ecstatic. On the second, on the second time, I, I was, was like, so nervous. I hope this works. I was like, oh my gosh, we're never going to have it. Now, going along with that, you may think, oh, it's the most frequently used toilet. They must have installed the toilet, right? No, that was out. done. Nope. Still sitting in our dining room. If you were to come over to our house right now, you would see a toilet in our dining room. I did get rid of the vanity. We took, I took the vanity and the old sink to restore. So that was good. But the toilet is still there because I thought this was very smart. Brad said, you know what? 
don't I don't know if this is just your way of getting out of installing the toilet right now or what. Right. But you oh. were like he was like, I think it will be much more successful for us to not put it in for a while. Like it's incentive to get these projects done and get back to um, doing the rest of the bathroom by not by having leaving the, the toilet, toilet out. in there. Make it harder on yourself. So this is <sighs> I used to be, I, there's some funny comments coming in here oh, too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Taylor said uh, you broke down the, the game film on the first run and you're ready for the second. I really we, was. Actually, the funny I part is. I was so worried. We didn't film any of that. As you, If you watch the video, no. you noticed. Just because like I'm I so was I'm so glad in, we don't was, have that yeah, on film. I was so. I was like, I was like getting sweaty. I was like, I was nervous. I was super nervous. I know. I just didn't want, I just want, I wanted us to be able to move on with our lives. I wanted to be did. able to like but, watch movies with you in the evening again. Well, here's the funny thing. And, and the reason where I get that from I used to be like a big uh, theater buff, home theater. Like I had these grand visions of making a home theater in our old place yep. up in Ohio. We've talked about this in every in Ohio. house. Um, but we have a space for it there, like in the in the basement. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I was on these forums about home theater. And what all these people say is like, do not hang your projector before you are completely done with oh, your home theater. Oh, because otherwise you'll just be like, it's good enough. Because they, so all these people, oh. they'll like, they'll get everything done and then they'll like still need to do trim and still need to like add oh, some accents and that stuff. That would be us. And then they put They'd the screen. They'd be like, trim, the, who needs it? They put like, the screen and the projector up and they're like, Let's watch I'm Mission done. Impossible. That's and so, so funny. Thing. Don't throw your, your projector or your toilet until you're That's ready That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, RLL, absolutely, dude. I would love to, I would love to hear that. Yeah. And Matt, I love it, man. I would love uh, to see you get some more content out, dude. That'd be fantastic. New MFP episode, SEMO. We have it recorded. We're going to be releasing it on Tuesday. Yay, so, Tuesday. MFP, somebody asked that. It might have been yeah. somebody earlier. Somebody else asked that. That's awesome. Aiden Krimpitz, 15 years old, and last winter made $2,000 on cutting boards. My video on the cutting boards was so helpful. Dude, that is awesome, man. Congrats on that. Good on you for uh, getting to work and making some money with your hands. That's fantastic. That is really awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan of all trades. What's up, my man? Uh, oh, we got and we got Ryan is 14. Man, we got the, the young bucks I'm in here. I love you. it. This is fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Call me Mac. You are late, my man, but that's okay. Uh, we start at 9, 9 p.m. Central time. So, mm -hmm. uh, But the nice thing about YouTube is it's super easy to rewatch it as well. Yep. And you can scrub through nice and YouTube easy. YouTube is so better on all levels. If you want to go see the stuff in the beginning, you can always do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rick and Beth are doing projects together all the time. That's awesome. Ah, Brad, what? any tips to not spill leftover toilet water when removing them? Oh, yeah. Is this a setup? Did you watch the video? Did, who, Is that what who you Who asked were doing? it? If it was Taylor, then that's absolutely no. a setup. <laughs> it was Daryl. Oh, uh, any tips? Yeah, actually, Daryl, uh, what I did was um, I used you a. You get your wife's turkey baster. A turkey baster. From the kitchen that yeah. she's going to use again uh, at you Thanksgiving. See the comments? There's oh, I'm sure several there comments no. about that. <laughs> no, don't do that. Go to the dollar Let's store. See, guys said, buy a cheapy, a cheapy toilet baster, baster that you're never. Toilet baster. Toilet baster. <laughs> <laughs> turkey baster that you're never going to use again. Yeah. And it's really cheap. It is like the worst quality toilet. It's, Which is fine because it's just toilet water. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Uh, it's do you have it in here? here? Oh, yeah. Well, it's oh, in, you it's keep in the it. plumbing bag. It's in the plumbing bag. Keep and it's a like plumbing falls bag. Apart. You can put it in there. Yeah. Because it. Oh, wow. That is cheap. Yeah. So it's like, it's not even like connected. It's yeah. It's probably filled with pee. Probably. Yeah. This, this one comment was like, the turkey tastes like pee. <laughs> no. Thanksgiving so is, is like right the around worst the corner. Quality. Anyway, yeah. This just a little turkey baster. Whoop, whoop. And you just suck up the water and, and then like put it into like a bucket or something. Put it in a container. And yeah. uh, it, it works great for the tank as well in the top. So there you go. You I use heard it, it here in first. the tank and the bowl and just pour, uh, take it out. And again, this thing is horrible. It's literally from the dollar store. Rick says, wet dry vac and suck it out. Yeah, if you've got it hooked up for that. Um, I never use my wet dry vac for wet because I always have a filter on it. And then it's just a pain in the butt to take that off. And I mean, I'm just lazy, obviously. Um, if, yeah. if I was doing something bigger, I would do that. But, you know, for a little job like that, I'm just like, ah, I don't want to have to take it off and like find the, you know, take, because I have a bag and a filter. So I'd have to take the bag off, take the filter off, do the little hooky thing in there. Um, I ain't doing all that. Yeah. I'll Brandon. Just grab the turkey baster. Brendan, Brendan, I think it's probably Brendan, says he's made up for $3,000 on everything he's made. He's only 12. I'm sorry, what? Are 12. We, and, and I'm only 12. All right. We have a 12-year-old. We do. I uh, cannot imagine him out here building no. a bunch of things. Impressive. I feel like, I feel like, uh, I feel like 
Yeah. People are starting to mess with. Be like, I'm eight. And I made seven thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only six no, years old. I and I made a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. I hope all you guys yes. uh, are making. We want only good things making for you. stuff and learning. That's fantastic. That's great. Yes. Keep um, going. Just don't. You know. Just be safe. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Would you see Rick says him and Beth do projects together all the time? I'm surprised I'm still alive. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no. I feel is. like Beth would keep you in line. I, I feel like they. I feel like they would. They probably keep each other in like, line. Just they. They come together on Sundays. Right. For for the live. For the live, and that's yep. that's, that's that's probably. Good. We're good helps, for their marriage. Helps settle is what we're things. Saying. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right, goodness. so we're winding down here, getting we close are. to ten o'clock. Uh, so this week, the. Well, the plan is to have this video out yes. on Sunday. That is the hope and the prayer. The hope and the prayer. That's the plan. We're, we're trying a new it's morning. The plan. We're trying a new morning routine. Do you want to tell them? I brought it up. So I Go guess ahead. We um, <laughs> <laughs> this is like an. They could be our accountability partner. They could. Uh, so I'm. I typically wake up at like eight. Yeah. And. Uh, he says the goodbye. Kids they go. Well, they usually the kids come running in there to say goodbye to you. Because I'm a night owl. I'm a night yes. owl. Yes. Um, I because Your whole I'm, family I'm, I'm is. staying up. I stay up till midnight or later most nights, and I just you know I try to still get eight hours and stuff. They're like, I know if I get up at eight, that's okay. Yeah. But and so I typically I, I get ready and I'll come down and by about nine o'clock is when I get started working. So I'm kind of a lazy bones that way. <laughs> But I work, like, I keep working. And that's something that we've talked about. I think right. we've even talked about it here. Work-life balance. Trying to get better work-life balance. It's hard when you work at your home. And, and so you can always just work. One way we're going to try to do that is to wake up and me get started earlier and then just be done working at, like, 5. Yeah. And so we're going to try that this week. Right. So I have already, get up early. I've already set the bedtime alarm on my phone. Um, the goal is, at least for me, I think I would what think this would be good for you, 1030. It's in 30 so minutes. Have, so we have to be We're off We're supposed here. to be in bed. I don't know if it's going to happen. Because, you know, normally we would have, like, we wouldn't be doing a live from 9 to 10. So we'll see. I think, worst case, 11, which yes. would still be earlier for you. And it then my goal is to get up at 6. I don't know about you. I want to get up and work out before I start working. And then, but what are you going to, what time are you going to get up? I don't know. We'll let's just, to... let's, let's baby step our way into this tonight seven. by 11. In bed. 11 to 7. I'm good there. 11 to 7. I need the 8 hours. That's like, good. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, to... see, you don't ever nap during the day. No, I could no. get 8 hours. I have done, I have gotten 8 hours every single day, and I still crash every she afternoon. She's a napper. I've, like, looked into this medically. I don't but know the, why, uh, but oh, I have to take, like, a 20-minute nap. My phone's over there. I was going to say, like, it, that's one of the things. I have a, I wear a Garmin. And it does the sleep tracking. And yeah, so it tells me like nice. how many hours I get every night, which is fun. Right. And then like, um, you're good with eight. Good. Yeah, yeah. So I think 11 to seven is good. And then maybe tomorrow night when we don't have a live, maybe we'll go to bed earlier than 11. Six. <laughs> Before the kids. Kids, no, put yourself we're, to sleep. We're going to baby step this in there. So anyway. Yes. The idea That's behind the that. We're going to see how it is. So next week, ask us. Yeah. Uh, make sure you ask us next week of, of how it's going because we'll let you know. And uh, if we completely fall off the wagon, go to bed at midnight, then uh, we'll let you yeah. know that too. I'm really curious but to we're know. We're trying to get better. We're I trying like to be it's... better versions of ourselves, and we think that's going to help. Right. Um, I feel like it's too late to ask so we'll this right now since we're about to hop off, but like, what time do you go to sleep? What time oh, do we don't... wake up? Yeah. Tell I know. us that next week. Tell, hold... Next week, we'll jump into that. Put a pin in that. Come back. Put a pin in we'll that. We'll circle back next week. Give us some tips, maybe, if you yeah. think of anything during tips the week. Tips. Feel free to it. share. Cool. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. So we, we gotta have, go to bed. I, I gotta go because she's gonna yeah. get to bed. So and I've gotta still do all the editing on this to like write this stuff. Oh my in. gosh. So. Matt stays up until one or two and gets up at six thirty. Maybe I would love to do that. Wouldn't you love if it? My body worked that way. I know, yeah. but like the few people out there that only need like six hours, I am so jealous. Jelly. Totally jealous. We are not those people, those unfortunately. Those, we ain't these people. We are not these not people it. ain't us. Nope. But we are the people then that you are can gonna go. be here next Sunday. Yes. So uh, you guys have a great week. Get out there, build something awesome this week. Oh, by the way, I did get the uh, the million viewer, the million the sub uh, award in the mail. We've not opened it up yet. You, got, you better believe when that sucker got delivered to our front door. I happened to just like right after it got delivered, I saw it out there and I ran out there and snatched that sucker oh, up so fast. So, because I'm gonna open it up on a on a video or on the I can't remember what we're gonna on do, but something. anyway on the live so we're, we're still in the works on that i've kind of this this origin story video i'm working on that on the yep. side i want it what we decided is that we wanted all this done before we did that video because like the shop's a mess and i wanted to kind of be it able is. to have different shots of the shop so anyway that's it's what coming that's it. 
Yeah. So all that said, have a great week and uh, we'll see you next week. See all you right. guys. Good night.